Hi, welcome to a very special episode of, uh, well, Mindset Explosion. It's just a bit of a promotional and a shout out, a talk about Awareness to World AIDS Day on the 1st of December. I've been joined today by Gemma and Naomi from the Eddie Stone Trust. And um, I've been really looking forward to this, actually, to find out a little bit more about what you guys do, the, the great work. And I know we just spoke off air um, and fantastic things coming up, which we want to talk about. But Let's get started. Let's find out a little bit more. What's the Eddystone Trust, first of all? Let's talk about what you guys are doing there. The Eddystone Trust is a HIV and sexual health charity that covers the majority of the Southwest. Uh, so we're a charity that um, talks about sexual health, talks about HIV, trying to break down the stigma and break down the, the difficulty of people talking about their sexual health. Brilliant, brilliant. And, and is it how long has the Eddie Stone Trust been going? Uh, it's been going pretty much from uh, the mid to late 80s. So we actually started as a support group of people who had been diagnosed with HIV in the early days. And yeah. it naturally grew so big because diagnosis numbers were getting bigger and bigger. So they used to meet in people's houses. It got too big for that. So they decided we need to make a charity. Um, and the Eddie Stone Trust grew from there. So Eddie Stone is the rock that holds the lighthouse up in Plymouth. Um, and that's where it all started. So, yeah, that's uh, that's our history. I like that. That's just a little shiver down my spine, the, the way you said the rock and the, you know, the, the lighthouse. I think that's really quite an important metaphor. And I met some of the, the guys at One of the Recovery Group, lovely bunch of people. And um, like Gemma's, are you the coordinator, right? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, facilitator extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously, and I, I didn't realize it had been like the, the, the trust had been running so long. And obviously, I remember obviously in growing, well, I was obviously born in the uh, you know, the 2000s. It just looks like I'm 46 or whatever it is now. Um, but I, I remember the adverts, and you kind of touched on it just before we came on camera, Naomi. Of, um, you know, don't die of ignorance and quite yeah. horrific adverts really um, back in the day. And it, obviously there has been such a stigma. And obviously the purpose of, you know, this this interview is to, you know, put, put a bit, well, put a quash on it basically and say where, you know, where we are today because the past is important to, to learn yeah. from mistakes, I believe. But it's, you know, where are we now and where, where are we going? So what's your thoughts on that and how it's evolved and, you know, um, over time? Well, we started with, like you said, you know, the Don't Die of Ignorance campaigns, which were very cleverly, I think, designed to, to put fear into people. You know, yeah. there were tombstones and icebergs. It was all very loud and... Um, Wrecking balls. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you frighten people, they tend to go underground. You know, we bury our heads in the sun. So mm. the health promotion then was something that needed to be done, but possibly frightened a lot of people out of being tested and things and the stigma of being tested or being uh, diagnosed with HIV as well you know there was things like you wouldn't be able to get insurance or a mortgage even if you'd had a test let alone be positive or negative and um, HIV when it was first discovered was actually called GRID so gay related immune deficiency so you can see where all of the misinformation has come from immediately you know the gay man's disease when actually yeah. it, it will affect anyone or can affect anyone and um, today it's very different while so health promotion is we don't want to frighten people we want to tell people the facts and um some of the facts are that you can live very very well with hiv you take one to two tablets a day now um, and that's going to keep you living if not as long, sometimes longer than people who don't have HIV. You know, there's medicines that you can take to stop you getting uh, the virus. So PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis is a medicine that you take every day. And it's now been through trials and proven that it stops HIV in its tracks. So people can have the kind of sex that they want to have without worrying about contracting this virus. Stigma wise, though, the stigma still there. The misinformation still there. You know, we have uh, people who believe that you can contract HIV from kissing still. Um, when actually, if you could, it would be a much more rife virus, wouldn't it? Lots yeah, of people yeah. kiss. Um, or that you can get it from a toilet seat. Or yes, I remember that one. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a sexually transmitted infection or it's, um, it's blood to blood. So, you know, if you share needles. 
So that's the kind of information we want to get out. You can live well or you can prevent it completely, either by using a condom or by using uh, medicines such as PrEP. But that if you are diagnosed, it doesn't mean the end of your life. It means that there is support out there. There are uh, people like Gemma, who's our support worker, um, who is there to be able to talk with you and talk you through, you know, your medication or a regime you need to do or how to meet other people as well. Yeah. They're not alone. Yeah, we're actually just getting together a peer mental sort of um, system in place so that people can meet other people that have been through similar experiences which is we've got a couple in place already and they're going really well. That makes a massive difference. Yeah. So yeah. there's tons and tons of support, as well as the groups, as you know. That's, yeah. That's well, that, the, the group when um, I came in and it, I, I, I felt like, I know it was on Zoom just because that's mm -hmm. how it had to be, but um, I just felt everyone was so supportive of each other, really understood each other. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was like I just walked into a room of a family. Yeah, and, and, this is exactly what it's like. Yeah, yeah, it was it was nice. Sorry, Gemma, what were you gonna say? I can't remember. <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> gone. Um no, totally gone. But no, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what the group's like. And and we we want to get some more focus groups. We want to run some programs around new diagnosis and living well with HIV into old age, because now people that were diagnosed in the 80s are coming to that sort of age group they're going to require care um, and that might bring another layer of stigma into their lives because a lot of people still haven't told people or you know and they're going to a care home they might have to have their medication given to them by somebody else if they don't understand that there's no risk involved then they could be stigmatized even at that old age which is you know yeah I guess. Years. so there's a lot of work to come yeah, yeah. Yeah, in uh, 2019, there were 622 deaths uh, that were related to HIV. You know, we've got medicine that, that allows people to live very well. So why are we still having 622 deaths a year, if any at all? You know, people should be able to live well, but that stigma stops people from testing um, or perhaps even stops them from taking their medication. Yeah because uh, of fear of people finding out or recognizing the bottle and things so our health promotion today is all about actually we are here to help you and we're here to help you from testing so we do a testing service as well and a test now is you can just have a finger prick test and a result in 20 minutes so it's not the going to a clinic and having therapy for a week and waiting two weeks to a month for your results it's you can have it there and then with someone who can talk you through all yeah. of the processes and things. And with no details, you don't have to yeah. give any details either. So nothing goes on record. All we all we need is, well, nothing really. Yeah. A contact number so that we can follow up and support people after if that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you might have already said this, Naomi, but I know Gemma just before um I um did a talk for you that you said that people can have a, a normal and healthy relationship as well, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you take your medication um, correctly, you can get something called an undetectable viral load. Uh, it's advertised as U equals U. So undetectable is untransmittable. So if you have an undetectable viral load, it means that you can't pass the virus on sexually. So it means if you have got uh, someone who's living with HIV and a partner who isn't, they can have a perfectly healthy sex life. They can, if they want to, they can have children who are also negative. Um, so it, it's absolutely massive, the U equals U stuff. Um, isn't that well known in the general population? So it's something that, again, needs to be really advertised and shouted out. You know, someone living with HIV with an undetectable viral load cannot pass on the virus. So again, bring down that stigma because HIV should be everybody's business. This isn't, this isn't grid. This isn't the gay-related immune deficiency. This is HIV, so human immuno deficiency virus it'll affect a human regardless of your gender or your sexuality or your age or your experience you know it, it only takes once you might just have unprotected sex once and, and just be wrong place wrong time and contract the virus so everybody needs to know about HIV yeah. definitely yeah definitely and you know thank you for sharing that because I think even before um I spoke to you you know last time Gemma that I didn't know that and, and I, I think this is why this video is so important, or this podcast is so important, because 
I guess you don't know what you don't know, but and when you hear it, it it's like, for me, it's quite warming to think, A, I feel, I feel I'm the ignorant one, really, for not being aware of stuff. But, you know, I think it's important to, you know, make put this message out so that, that so it does, I think it does take the stigma away. Whether it's, I'm sure there's flipping miles to go yet, but um, do you feel it's come, a, it seems like it's come a long way anyway. It so. has, yeah, it's come a long way. Now yeah. it's just, we need to just push that a little bit further with the new messages. Yeah. Um, just for people to know those and understand those. And it will just, again, bring down those walls a little bit more. Um, and yeah. the new generation, you know, how much is HIV discussed in schools? when actually they're going to be the generation which are going to be contracting HIV next, aren't they? So yep. if we can get in early enough and do that health promotion stuff there and then, then that's another way of kind of reducing HIV transmission. Like the government wants zero HIV transmissions by 2030. Um, but the only way to do that is through health promotion. Yep. Otherwise, people are just going to yeah, keep yeah. contracting yeah. the virus. Yeah. yeah. And where do you feel the UK is in on that? Because so like 20 years ago, I was in South Africa and it was, it was I don't know what it's like there now, but it was quite rife. And the attitude was very much, it almost felt worse than growing up in the 80s, to be honest with you. Like, how do you feel it is around the world? Or is it, you know, let's just focus on the UK for a moment. How do you feel about it? I mean, dependent on where you are in the world, isn't it? You know, there are some countries where you are really at risk if you're living with HIV, yeah. you're at risk of violence. Um, yeah. Other countries, it's, you know, you're being ostracised and things. Um, in the UK, the stigma's still there, yeah. obviously. You know, if you if you go on apps or sites where, you know, people will say no, no pause or no positive um, because they don't want any contact with people who are HIV positive. So again, it's still there. I mean, with the government's zero transmissions, they do want to look at reducing transmission, but we have to reduce the stigma in order to reduce the transmissions. And also we need access to, you know, the healthcare, we need access to prevention services. Um, we need we need money to provide yeah. the prevention services as well as the support services, Perfect. yeah. Yeah. So, in t and is there any way, like, how can um, how can people support the trust, or it, you know, what, what's the best way to support like this movement? I guess. Well, we're a charity, so volunteers are always very, very welcomed. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> um, volunteers are an absolute precious commodity, especially in today's age. You know, everybody's very busy. We most of us work full time and very little spare time. So any volunteers that we can have, we are very, very grateful for. Um, and there's also, you know, the health promotion side as well. Wear your red ribbon. Yeah, and talk. Like, if you listen to this podcast or, or see it, then talk to other people and share the message. Like, if one person knows about you equals you, then it's passing yeah. the message on, then that person passes it to somebody else. Or come and see us in the shop, whatever, and have a chat and learn a bit more. Because we, we know it all. Yeah. And we're there to share it. And people's stories will tell their story too, which is, you know, it all helps to break that stigma down. So that's probably the most powerful way of supporting at the moment, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just talk about it. Make HIV, um, there's a, it's not a word, but talk aboutable. <laughs> yeah. Talk about <laughs> Rather than, you know, something taboo because it's linked to sex. So we mustn't talk about that because. You know, no one has sex, right? Naughty. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These, these kids disappeared. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Baby. Yeah, just talk about it. Talk about yeah. HIV. Gemma mentioned the shop as well. We've got a shop space for World AIDS Day. So uh, the 1st of December, next Wednesday. Yeah. 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 And um, so we've got a shop in Kings Walk in Gloucester. Come and say hello. Come and see. So we've got HIV uh, then and HIV now. So on one side, we're going to have all the history stuff. So if you are old enough, like us, to remember the Don't Die of Ignorance, come and have a look, come and see what you remember, read the leaflet. And then on the other side, we've got the today's health promotion. So the PrEP, the free exposure prophylaxis, testing information, uh, messages from people living with HIV. We'll also have rapid tests uh, for free. So if you think you need a HIV test, come and grab a rapid test for free. You can take it home or wherever you want to and do it yourself. 
and it will give you a, re a response in 20 minutes and grab a ribbon, wear yeah. your red ribbon and wear it with pride, you know, show your support for people living with HIV and remember those lost as well because we have lost so many yeah. and join us in solidarity, you know, we will stand up and speak up for yeah. people living with HIV. Oh, that's fantastic. So that's King's Walk, Shopping Centre, Gloucester, 1st of December, yeah. Yeah, 10 yeah. till 4, yeah. 10 till there 4. There will also be a stand in Gloucester Royal Atrium, which will be, there'll be red ribbons available there as well, won't there? Yeah. We won't be on it, but there, <laughs> there will be information and there will be red ribbons for people yeah. to pick up. We're in the shop. Yeah, we're yeah. in the shop. <laughs> Where, where the fun happens. <laughs> yeah. oh, so that's both on the first as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah brilliant. Is there anything else that the, the that the trust is doing up and down like the southwest, or is that just the one you're aware of at the moment? We have a lot of yeah. uh radio interviews. Ooh. So, you know, check your local radios and see if you can catch your local prevention worker speaking. Um, I think Trace is on the front in Plymouth yeah. on the sofa talking about World AIDS Day. Yeah, Plymouth Seafront is yeah, by so... the lighthouse. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's sat on a sofa in the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember it being very warm in King's Walk when I used to do promotions in there. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it was fine. <laughs> um, but, no, thank you so much. It has been really informative and I think. Um, so important, like you said. Um, something I did want to ask, I don't know if you did say it, uh, so before we come on, you, you mentioned about U equals U. Uh, let's just go for that again. What, what does U equals U mean in a bit more detail? It's, it's the like Q is word. undetectable, is untransmittable. So right. when someone has HIV, they have something called a viral load. So a viral load is exactly what it says on the tin. It's how much virus you have in your system. Um, so when it gets to a point of being undetectable, it means that that virus can't be detected in someone's system anymore. So it's there. HIV isn't curable yet, um, but it's manageable. So when it's undetectable, it means they can't pass the virus on sexually. Uh, so it just means that, you know, HIV positive people can have relationships with HIV negative people with no risk of the virus being passed on at all. Brilliant. And um, what is PrEP? PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, yeah. bit of a mouthful. <laughs> pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP is a medication. It is uh, essentially HIV medication. And you take it daily if you don't have HIV. And it stops you contracting the virus. Um, so it's gone through trials. It's now free on the NHS. Uh, you can purchase it online as well. But you need to make sure you're going through the correct channels. So I want PrEP now is a really good website. PrEP stuff is another one. Because if you buy meds off the internet, you need to be really careful what you're purchasing. But these two sites will point you in the direction of the proper stuff. Um, but you can get it free from your local sexual health clinic. Uh, so they provide the medicines, they provide the health care as well. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a massive step in HIV prevention. Absolutely. So would that kind of be, so if, if um, your partner or you met someone that has HIV, you would be taking the prep basically is that right yeah yeah or um if you are engaging in condomless sex um, and perhaps using condoms isn't something that you're thinking about doing then prep is another option for you um cool. so you can use prep and and essentially just stop the <clears throat> transmission of this virus no brilliant brilliant um no it's fantastic and you know it's, it's so great what you guys are doing um, and, and I could, you know, say Gemma when um, comes to do the talk for the group, you can, you can see that. And it, like I said, they it is so supportive and it's such an important um, charity that the work you guys are doing and working so hard. I know. Um, so anyone watching or listening, like Gemma said, please just share this. Drop some comments in. Seven words be good, and that gets the message out for us even more. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Well done. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, Definitely. And, and yeah, just keep doing the good work. Um, just before we finish up, is there anything else that's coming up over the next year? Any like important information, any like new treatments you might be aware of that are in the works? Or there's a, uh, there's a new depot injection, which is in the works at the moment. There's not a lot of information about it because it's still currently going through trials um, before even going to licensing. But a depot is essentially an injection where there's a slow release of medication over time. So there's a depot being looked at for people living with HIV. So this is massive because humans naturally 
aren't very good at taking medicine every day. Um, yeah. It's just in our nature, isn't it? So if someone's struggling with their meds um, or they live a chaotic lifestyle, then this depot is going to be a game changer. It means that you just have an injection and however many months it's going to be able to last for covers you and then you can go back however months later and have another injection. So it, it's going to be easier for people to, to get that undetectable viral load. At the moment, you know, best practice and nice guidelines are that if you're diagnosed, you're offered meds immediately. Um, but some people don't feel ready to start taking mm. them or don't start red, or don't feel ready to, you know, start a regime or even are frightened of people finding a meds pot um, with the name on there. Yeah. So there will be no pot with no. an injection. There will be no, essentially no paper trail or pot trail or anything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a massive it's another thing. option for people. Yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah. No, that's right. Um, yeah. and one last thing again. <laughs> so... Um, I know you obviously um, you've had a couple of speakers come to the the, the, the group you facilitate, yeah. um, and I know you you was quite I was overwhelmed when I put a message in my little WhatsApp group for you. I was like, oh okay. Um, so are you still looking for speakers? I know you're pretty much. We're always interested in speakers. Um, yeah. You know, we've been the life coaching stuff's been well received. We've had some really HIV focused guest speakers coming in. 6th of December, we've got a guy called Robert May. He's got an amazing story to tell from up in Leicester. He he was diagnosed in the 80s um, and he runs a lot of pride events up there. So we've got, and we've had consultants come, we've got pharmacists coming in. But anyone that feels they've got something to give or a story to tell is always welcome to get in touch. Because, yeah, yeah the more the merrier, really. Yeah, we're always interested in more people. Brilliant. I know you had a nutritionist, but even if it's like around mental health as well, right? Yeah, yeah. mental health, nutrition, um, weight management, anything like that, you know. But yeah. So the thing I'm about really enjoying it. sexual health is it's just it doesn't just affect, you know, your your sexual organs. It affects every part of yeah. you. You know, HIV isn't just you've got a sexually transmitted infection, it's gonna affect your your mental health as well as your physical yeah. health. Your sense of self, your confidence, you self-esteem. know, self-esteem. So anything around that, yeah, is priceless. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Cool. Is there anything else you guys want to share before we finish up? I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah. All Thank right. you. All right. So, watching or listening, don't forget World AIDS Day on the first of December. If you are in Gloucester, get yourself down to Kings Walk Shopping Centre. If you're not in Gloucester. You can get a train there and you can yes, walk. Exactly. Right there, right there. Bring us coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a real nice bus station as well in uh, Gloucester now, last time I drove past there. Uh, so it's easy, accessible. Bring some coffee, definitely. And there's plenty of coffee shops in Gloucester because that's yeah. from what I remember all it is now. And <laughs> um, but you know, all the best with the art, um, you know, with what you're doing there. It sounds really good, actually, like a transition from you know, where it's gone from. I, I guess yeah, the shock tactic of the old is is obviously gone, but that, that's also quite important, I think, as well, to see, like, how it's developed. And this is where we're at. This yeah, is where, where people we're at. remember it as well. Yeah. It was so shocking, you know. If that was the last HIV message that someone had, know, right? they're still going to have that today. Yeah. They're still going to remember, you know, the, the AIDS adverts. Um, when that's they, how sort of shocking they were. Yeah. The thirty odd years on, we're still talking about, talking about yeah, still remembering. Yeah, them. definitely. Yeah. Actually, you feel like we're just we're still in a pandemic, really, and it's yeah. more scary than that. To be, uh, this yeah. it would be on the TV, so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, we're not there anymore. Um, no, you know, to the future. Thank you so much for the great work that you do, and as again, please, anyone watching, don't forget to share um, and pass the message on. All right, peace. Thank you for promoting for us. Yeah. Thank you, oh, my pleasure. All right. I'll just work out how to end this recording and I'll speak to yeah. you. <laughs>